Hi, I'm Jan Elias of the Yale School of Management. In this video, we will look at the trading process to show you how the Yale stock trading game is played. To spot trading opportunities, you need to monitor information flows, both public and private. As the game progresses, you should be aware of the public information being ordered on the various stocks, the SARs and the EPS announcement. You should also pay attention to the last closed transaction. This information appears underneath each company on the trading screen or in the market log screen. You will also develop inside information by buying peaks and comparing what you see from this information with what is available publicly. Having private information will allow you to spot good deals by finding anomalies either in the public information or in the trading that is going on. For example, at the beginning of this game, you note that the red stock has a SAR at $31 a share. You decide to purchase three peaks of the red stock. In your peaks, you note that there are a large number of negative cards in the company's stack. This suggests that the value of the stock may be lower than the SAR. You check the market price per share and see that the last trade was at $29. In line with the SAR, but not with your own assessment that this could be a less valuable stock. So you go to the trading portion of the game and click on the red stock trading page. You look at the existing bids and asks and note that there's a fairly wide range between the bids and asks. One trader has offered to sell a share at $35 and another has offered to buy shares at $20 a share. You wanna reduce your holdings of red and guess that you could induce someone to buy your shares if you price it somewhat lower than both the SAR and the previous low ask. You decide to put in a limit order to sell three shares at $30. You fill in the limit order section on the red stock and hit the place order button. Your order will now go into the market order section of the screen. Your order will be the lowest ask and therefore the first one that other traders would hit if they wanted to buy the stock. If you had asked for more than $35, your order would have been placed higher in the queue. On the right-hand side of the screen, your ask will be recorded as an open order. At first, nothing will happen to your account. You will not be charged for the transaction, nor will you be credited with selling the shares until someone else hits the buy button to purchase the shares at your ask price. This may take some time or even never happen. It depends on how attractive your ask is to those who are looking to buy red stock. If you should feel that you want to get out of this transaction, you can cancel your ask at any point before someone accepts. You can do this by hitting the cancel order button next to the order you have placed in the market order section. There is no cost to you in either floating or canceling a bid or an ask. As you wait for someone to sell you their shares at the price that you have asked, you don't have to stay on the red trading screen. You can go to the trading screens of other stocks or pursue additional information. If your limit order is accepted, the change in cash and your share portfolio will be automatically updated to reflect the transaction. And the order will be deleted from your open order screen. In this game, someone accepted your $30 ask for all three shares. Your cash account goes up $90 and your portfolio shows only two red shares left. Let's say you turn your interest toward blue shares. You go to the blue trading screen and note that there is a very small gap between bids and asks. The highest bid is for $57 and the lowest ask is for $60. You think that the $60 is a pretty good price. And rather than create a limit order to buy shares, you can immediately buy the shares on the market order section. You decide to buy two shares at $60. You check your cash account and there's enough money in it to cover the purchase. After filling out the number of shares, you hit the buy button. Now your cash account will automatically be debited $120 for the transaction and the blue stock in your portfolio will increase by two shares. Be aware that even if you accept either a bid or ask in the market order section, you might not be able to complete the order. 
with dozens of players and latency within the system, there is a likelihood that someone might snap up the order before you do. This actually is a feature of many electronic trading systems. You may need to refresh your screen to continue and try again with another order. Now let's say that you think that Orange's shares are too high. Having previously sold most of your Orange shares, you can still take advantage of your insight. You can sell up to five shares that you do not own, either through a limit or a market order. In this way, you are shorting the stock. In this case, you create a limit order to sell five Orange shares at $78, even though you only own one share of Orange stock. If your transaction clears, you will receive $390, with $312 coming from the shares that you do not own. If you do not buy orange shares during the rest of the game, at the end of the game, the computer will purchase four shares of orange stock at the liquidation final price and charge your account. Let's say the final price is $50 a share on the orange stock. The computer will charge your account with $200 for the four shares you are short. This means you will have made $112 on your short position. You can also borrow money to go long on a stock. Even if your cash account is zero, you can buy up to $200 worth of shares. Be aware, the game will not allow you to make a purchase which would put you in more than $200 debt. At the end of the game, if you have a negative cash account, you will have to pay back the amount you borrowed plus 10% as interest. You profit if the shares you bought are worth more than what you paid for them, plus 10%. Now you know some of the basics of the game. Good luck and happy trading.